Huntsman the Unlucky, a Russian tale from the Goldenrod Fairy Book, translated by Esther Singleton. Once upon a time, there lived a huntsman. He would go every day in search of game, but it often happened that he had killed nothing, and so he was obliged to return home with his empty bag. On that account, he was nicknamed Huntsman the Unlucky. At last, he was reduced by his ill fortune to such extremities that he had not a piece of bread nor kopek left. The wretched man wandered about the forest, cold and hungry. He had eaten nothing for three days and was nearly dying of starvation. He lay down on the grass, determined to put an end to his existence. Happily, better thoughts came to his mind. He crossed himself and drew away the gun. Suddenly, he heard a rustling sound near him. It seemed to issue from some thick grass close at hand. The hunter got up and approached the spot. He then observed that the grass partly hid a gloomy abyss, and from the bottom of which there rose a stone, and on it lay a small jar. As he looked and listened, the hunter heard a small voice crying, Dear kind traveler, release me! The voice seemed to proceed from the little jar. The courageous hunter, walking carefully from one stone to another, approached the spot where the jar lay, took it up gently, and heard a voice crying from within like the chirping of a grasshopper. Release me, and I will be of service to you. Who are you, my little friend? asked Huntsman the Unlucky. I have no name and cannot be seen by human eyes, answered a soft voice. If you want me... Call Mirza, a wicked magician put me in this jar, sealed it with the seal of King Solomon, and then threw me into this fearful place, where I have allayed for seventy years. Very good, uh, said Hunter the Unlucky. I-, I will give you your liberty, and then we shall see how you keep your word. He broke the seal and opened the little jar, but there was nothing in it. Hello, where are you, my friend? Uh, cried the hunter. By your side. A voice answered. The hunter looked about him, but could see no one. Mirza! uh, Ready, I await your orders. I am your servant for the next three days. I will do whatever you desire. You only have to say, go there, I know not where, bring something, I know not what. Uh, Very well, said the hunter. You will doubtless know best what is wanted. Uh, Go there, I know not where, bring something, I know not what. As soon as the hunter had uttered these words, there appeared before him a table covered in dishes, each filled with the most delicious viands, as if they were come direct from the banquet of the Tsar. The hunter sat down on the table, ate and drank until he was satisfied, and then he rose, crossed himself, bowed on all sides, exclaimed, Thank you! Thank you! Instantly the table and everything with it disappeared, and the hunter continued on his journey. After walking some distance, he sat down by the roadside to rest, and it so happened that while the hunter was resting himself, there passed through the forest a gypsy thief, leading a horse that which he wished to sell. I really wish I had the money to buy the horse with, thought the hunter. What a pity, my pockets are empty. However, I will ask my invisible friend, uh, Mirza. Ready. Go there, I know not where, bring something, I know not what. In less than a minute, the hunter heard the money chinking in his pocket. Gold poured into them. He knew not how, nor whence. "Uh, Thanks, you have kept your word, said the hunter. Then he began to bargain with the gypsy for the horse. Having agreed upon the price, he paid the man in gold, who, staring at the hunter with his mouth wide open, wondered where Huntsman the Unlucky got so much money from. Parting from the hunter, the gypsy thief ran with all the speed to the farther end of the forest and whistled. There was no answer. Hmm, they're all asleep, thought the gypsy, and entered the cavern where some robbers, laying on the skins of animals, were resting themselves. Hello, comrades, are you asleep? cried the gypsy. Uh, Get up, quick, or you will lose a fine bird. He's alone in the forest, his pockets are full of gold. Make haste! The robbers sprang up, mounted their horses, and galloped after the hunter. The hunter heard the clatter, and seeing himself suddenly surrounded by, cried out, "Uh, Mirza! Uh, Ready, cried a voice near him. Go there, I know not where. Bring something, I know not what. There was a rustling noise heard in the forest, and then something from behind the trees fell upon the robbers. They were knocked from their horses and scattered on all sides, yet no hand was seen to touch them. 
The robbers, thrown upon the ground, could not raise themselves, and the hunter, thankful and rejoicing at his deliverance, rode on, and soon found himself out of the dark forest, and came upon a town. Near this town, a tents full of soldiers were pitched. Huntsman the Unlucky was told that an enormous array of Tartars had come, under the command of their Khan, who, angry at being refused the hand of the beautiful um, Milov Zora, the daughter of the Tsar, had declared war against him. The hunter had seen the princess uh, Milov Zora when she was out hunting in the forest. She used to ride a beautiful horse and carry a golden lance in her hand. A magnificent quiver of arrows hung from her shoulder. When her veil was lifted up, she appeared like a spring sunlight to give light uh, to the eyes and warmth to the heart. The hunter reflected for a little while and then cried, uh, Marissa! In an instant, he found himself dressed in splendid attire. His jacket was embroidered with gold. He wore a beautiful mantle on his shoulders, and ostrich feathers hung gracefully down from the top of his helmet, fastened by a brooch of a ruby surrounded by pearls. The hunter went to the castle, presented himself before the Tsar, and offered to drive away the force of the enemy on the condition that the Tsar gave him the beautiful princess Milov Zora for his wife. The Tsar was greatly surprised, but did not like to refuse such an offer at once. At first, he asked his hunter his name, his birth, and his uh, possessions. I am called the Huntsman the Unlucky, Master of Mirza the Invisible. The Tsar thought the young stranger was mad. The courtiers, however, who had seen him before, assured the Tsar that the stranger exactly resembled Huntsman the Unlucky, whom they knew, but how he got that splendid dress, they could not tell. Then the, then the Tsar demanded, Do you hear what they say? If you are telling lies, then you will lose your head. Let us see, then, how you will overcome the enemy with the forces of your invisible Mirza. Be of good hope, Tsar, answered uh, the hunter. As soon as I say the word, everything will be completed. Good, said the Tsar. If you had spoken the truth, then you shall have my daughter for your wife. If not, your head will be the forfeit. The hunter said to himself, I shall either become a prince, or I am a lost man. Then he whispered, Mirza, go there. I know not where. Do this. I know not what. A few minutes passed, and there was nothing to be heard or seen. Huntsman the unlucky turned pale. The Tsar, enraged, ordered him to be seized and put in irons when suddenly the firing of guns was heard in the distance. The Tsar and his courtiers uh, ran on the steps leading to the castle and saw bodies of men approaching from both right and left, their standards waving gracefully in the air. The soldiers were splendidly equipped. The Tsar could hardly believe his eyes, for he himself had no troops so fine as these. Uh, this is no delusion, cried Huntsman the Unlucky. These are the forces of my invisible friend. Let them drive away the enemy, then, if they can, said the Tsar. The hunter waved his handkerchief. The army wheeled into position, music burst forth from a martial strain, and then a great cloud of dust arose. When the dust had cleared away, the army was gone. The Tsar invited Huntsman the Unlucky to dinner, asked him numerous questions about Mirza the Invisible. At the second course, the news came that the enemy was flying in every direction, completely routed. The terrified Tartars had left all their tents and baggage behind. The Tsar thanked the hunter for his assistance and informed his daughter that he had found a husband for her. Princess Melovzora blushed upon receiving this intelligence and then turned pale and then began to shed tears. The hunter whispered something to Mirza and the princess's tears changed to precious stones as they fell. The courtiers hastened to pick them up. They were pearls and diamonds. The princess smiled at this and, overcome with uh, pleasure, uh, gave her hand to Huntsman the Unlucky. Unlucky no longer. Then began the feast, but here the story must end.